I met some guys that happened to know how to get money fast, which was selling drugs and stealing cars. There's a specific car that I was looking for where I was gonna get paid $10,000. I had to take this Porsche all the way into Monterey, Mexico. I threw down on the guy. We put him in the trunk of this car. Ended up putting his fingers through the trunk somehow. It just set me off. And that's when I shot him. I ended up stabbing him multiple times. And we just threw him in the woods. In March of 1985, I was sentenced to an aggravated life sentence to Texas Department of Corrections. The first day that I got to prison, I had to fight until they got tired. And one of the guys that, that was there, they, they would call him Big Allen. Everybody was scared of this dude. I mean, this is a huge dude. No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna make him my example, man. I went to my cell, I got a shank. I just started stabbing him. I started stabbing him in the chest, started stabbing him in the neck, and the only reason I stopped is because I was gonna kill his two friends too. Everybody is like, Man, that's art right there. That's grasshopper right there. And I'm not gonna lie, I, I liked it. Gangs wanted to recruit me. I ended up joining the most violent gang in the Texas prison. We would not hesitate to kill anybody. This is where I learned how to make a bomb. I made a spear. When he walked out of his cell, I speared him. I ended up jumping the fence on this guy. And I stabbed him probably 70 times. All that was behind him making noise. So I'm in this cell, six by nine, 24 hours a day, 365 days. There is no getting out of this. I didn't have any emotions no more. I was, I was dead. When I first came in contact with Arthur Medina through a criminal case that we were working against him, I thought there's a man that never needs to get out of the penitentiary. This was a ruthless prison inmate, one of the most feared in the state and well known in the prison system. And I knew he had the power to just pick me up out of the chair and probably break my neck if he wanted to. I felt led to use that opportunity. I asked Arthur, I said, let's, let's don't talk about the murder right now. Let's talk about something else. And I asked him, do you believe in God? What kind of a question was that? Do I believe in God? It just made something inside of me break. I don't know what made me say yes. And that was when he asked me, if you believe in God, then why don't you get to know him? So when I went back to my cell, I studied Islam, Buddhists, Mormonism, Jehovah with every religion on the face of the earth. But it was the Bible that spoke to me. I followed Arthur in his history and his reputation, and he was becoming very well known as a Bible student. He led Bible studies. The wardens spoke up for him and said, Arthur Medina is different. He's real. And then I saw a day I thought I would never see. When I came into the office, she goes, Mr. Medina, from here to here, you're arguably the worst inmate in TDC history. But from here to here, you're arguably the best inmate in TDC history. What happened right here? 
I said, ma'am, I believed in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, <laughs> and I ain't been the same since. And seven days later, I was granted a unanimous decision to be released from prison. I and my colleagues in law enforcement have learned throughout our careers is the evidence does not lie. And the evidence of Arthur's redemption is absolutely indisputable. There's nobody that can rebut the fact that Arthur Medina is a changed man, that he lives a life of faith, that he's an important member of our society, and the story has to be told. With God, nothing is impossible. Anger was removed from my life the moment that I saw forgiveness from God. The best way to describe the purpose that God has for me is knowing that these opportunities are God-given opportunities. And they're not for me. They're for me to help others. It's for me to help the guy that's done 20 years or more and can't find employment. So the sorrow, I have joy. So the chaos and the anger, I have peace. And it's a peace that does surpass all understanding. If God can change me, God can change anyone.